Hello, everyone. This is OPS, Olympic Peninsula Spotlight. I'm your host, Rick Nichols. And I'm Matthew Ornick. We'll be bringing you entertainment from the local area musicians, information concerning local businesses, and we'll also help to keep your calendar up to date with schedules for up-and-coming events. Our program is coming at you from Circle of Sound in Olympia, Washington. This full-service recording studio also offers in-house mastering, CD and DVD duplication, digital transfers, and audio restoration. Circle of Sound, reasonable rates and local convenience. Today in the studio, we're going to turn the spotlight on Doris Simpson Hill. She couldn't be here with us, so it'll be a phone interview. We're going to play three of her wonderful pieces, and Rick and Doris are going to give you a little bit of music history. listen to fanfare now we're going to listen to the burning bush
Let's welcome into the studio Doris Simpson Hill. Hello, Doris. How are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm well. Thank you. Very good. And uh, Rick told me you just had a birthday, so happy late birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it, yes, this is the month. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to hey. tell our audience a few personal things about yourself? Let them get to know you a little bit. Um, I can do that. I grew up in Southern Illinois on a farm. Uh, my father was very interested in me beginning study um, on the piano at a very early age. He even prayed before I was born that whatever I might be, I could play the piano. Having my mom take lessons um, when she carried me, and as soon as I was able, started lessons. Um, I studied all through high school and then college, went to Illinois Wesleyan as a piano major with um, music education emphasis. I later began studying organ in Michigan and decided that would be the way I would go for a master's. And after getting the master's degree, I was hired at Second Presbyterian Church in Bloomington. And I stayed there with a wonderful relationship for 37 and a half years. Uh, we have a wonderful music program there. Um, we had at the time I was hired 10 choirs, and they toured, the high school toured every year all over the United States. And the adult choir toured uh, to Europe around every five years or so. So that was a marvelous experience for me. I also, along with that, taught at Illinois Wesleyan, off and on through the years as time allowed. I was called an adjunct professor. I taught piano and organ and harpsichord and did accompanying for various various concerts. That, too, was a blessing relationship. I married my husband. Uh, we both graduated from the Illinois Wesleyan. We have four children, ten grandchildren, and one of them is married, so that's eleven, I suppose. We have enjoyed um, time together traveling and doing work and ministry in the church. I feel called to church music. That has been my passion throughout my life. Uh, that sounds like a lot. A very accomplished uh, music career. Um, your CD, The Burning Bush, is quite an accomplishment. Uh, what inspired you to, to do the music in that CD? Uh, one Sunday morning, I played The Burning Bush as a prelude when the pastor was teaching on Moses, and one of the pastors was a sculptor who subsequently designed a sculpture of the burning bush, and it's a beautiful, uh, wonderful work of art. The congregation decided to purchase it, and it hangs outside the sanctuary. I see it every Sunday, and I wanted to um, honor the pastor. And I really feel like there's so much music written for the church that lay people really never hear very much. So that was the inspiration, and um, I feel like um, Moses was called, but each of us is also called. And that the CD actually traces our faith journey to the liturgical year, beginning with Advent and Christmas and the crucifixion and Easter and um, the resurrection and then Christ's return just before um, the carol of Westminster. And that sculpture you're talking about, that's the one pictured on the CD, correct? That's right. right yeah, that's a very nice piece. Um, so, 
what compelled you to choose the particular 14 songs? You kind of gave a dis- brief description, but is there any anything more in each song that you'd like to tell our viewers? The Corral Number Three does not seem like it's a sacred title, but the three corrals of Frank were really kind of often referred to as the first one as Christ's life, the second one as his passion or crucifixion, and the third one as resurrection. I often played the Corral Number Three on Easter Sunday, and when I play it, I, it has many moods and try it, and I often try to think of what it might have been like when the tomb was empty. Right on. Um, and could you tell us a little bit more about where your CD was recorded? We recorded it in, uh, in Second Presbyterian Church on our new John Paul Buzard organ. Um, we put it in in 2002 or three, I guess, it was just 2003. We built a church in 2003, I'm sorry. The organ was installed in 2008, and um, I wanted to do a recording on that instrument, particularly to highlight the colors and um show the amazing uh, depth of sound it does have. Doris, I had a question for you. Okay. When all of this recording was going on, because I know it was done over several sessions, and uh, it was... uh, Only two sessions. Oh, it was only two sessions. Okay, but still, uh, I would guess fairly long sessions. Pretty good long the whole morning. <laughs> so, so it worked you pretty hard, right? Right. So at the end of it all, uh, when you got home at the end of the day, did uh, Ron still expect you to make dinner, or did he take you out that night? Mm. <laughs> Ron is wonderful help. Um, he probably took me out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, sus- I suspected such. All right. He even turned pages during the recording, so he needed a break as well as I. Yeah, he did a good job. <laughs> hey, Doris, could you tell us a little bit about the recording process? Uh, who who was your recording engineer, and and anything like that that you might want to share with our listening audience? John Newer is a lifetime friend, and he does a lot of recording and wants has wonderful equipment. He just brought his equipment to the church and we tested sound and balance and when it seemed okay to him, we went ahead and made the recording and then I listened to some of it, but I trusted John's ear to to catch whatever he, you know, he wanted to hear. So he, John Muir did the recording. And John lives right there in Bloomington? He does, yes. He's right near, really, five minutes from the church. So he's, he's right there. Great. And the uh, beautiful artwork on the CD, we, we know where the sculptor came from and all of that, but uh, who, who did all the great graphics and the printing on that? Dave Smith did the graphics and the printing on the program. Um, very beautifully, he's done work for our congregation for many years, um, and also uh, he and I think Jim Swanson probably took the picture of the organ pipes that you see. Yeah, that's a fantastic they, photo. They, yeah, they collaborated and decided that's the one they wanted to do. Now, I've did- always felt so much support from the congregation and. John is also a member there, and uh, they have worked so many hours for all of us, and it's been such a blessing. That's wonderful. Now, it's uh, David Smith from what used to be Ron Smith Printing, isn't that correct? It still is, yes. Oh, it still is, all right. 
Okay, well, right. you did. Well, everybody did a great job, Doris, on that CD, including yourself. And I'm going to turn the interview back over to Matthew now. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> no, it's no problem. You guys know each other a little more than I do. Um, working with the church, did you have uh, difficulty scheduling time for the sessions, or was it pretty easy to, to hammer out? Uh, Dr. Judy Webb is our minister of music now, and she was so accommodating, and it worked out very well between her schedule and mine, and she just let me know what what would be available. We did it ahead of time, and things were just so easy to do. It was not a problem. Um, it sounds like the organ that you played with has a, a pretty long history. Uh, would you like to, to give us a little information about the history? Yes, we had um, an Aeolian Skinner when I first started at the church in 1971, and that had beautiful sounds. Then we added to it with the Moeller Company, but uh, whenever we were in the building, the church building, in 2002, the church building was condemned, so it had to be torn down and a new structure built. When we did that, um, the committee decided to go with a new organ and have the design of the organ fit with the design of the sanctuary. So John Paul Buzard, the big builder of the organ, worked with our architect and designed together the style of the organ, and it was um, really a wonderful wedding of design because the cross that you see on the organ is carried out throughout the sanctuary. It, um, and when we had the organ put in in 2008, um, it was just so exciting. It's a big organ. Uh, it has 59, um, 59 ranks and, uh, let's see, 41, 41 stops. Cool. So it's a good size. We'll, we'll try to put the picture of that on the video so people can see what you're talking about. Um, so this is your third CD. Do you want to tell us about the other CDs that you made? Well, the first CD I made was most, it was all piano. Um, I did some Bach Goldberg and some classical pieces, a little Beethoven, but mostly it's hymn improvisations. Um, and I entitled it Home, thinking of the years I played the piano for my dad and we sang around the piano, all, all the hymns in the hymn book, I think, that, um, that was dedicated to my family. The second one was the old organ in our church and our old piano. We were given a new Steinway um, by a lady in our congregation. And I wanted to, before the church was torn down, do a CD that had both instruments. So the second CD was entitled Reflections. And I used the composers, Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, um, on there for both organ and piano. Yeah, I felt like that was a good balance of what we had done. We entitled it Re Reflections. A, a picture of the church, a silhouette of the church is there before it was torn down. Doris, of all the composers that you've done through the years, who are your favorites? That's very hard. <laughs> very hard to answer. I say so many are. Um, you can't hurt any of their feelings now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you can't help your feelings. I, again and again, turn to Bach probably most of all. Yeah. It, it seems to satisfy my spirit and... Um, I don't know, I just love Bach, and I love Brahms, and Frank, and Beethoven, and Mozart, and for the organ, I've enjoyed the French composers. I had studied me to Paris, France, and became acquainted with many of the French composers, 
and I love that too. So there's such wide diversity in music that we can listen to, and it's hard to leave any of the really wonderful ones out. Doris, I heard from someone a while back that Bach was actually contributed with setting the A440 uh, tuning uh, so that it was easier to to change keys from one key to another. Is that correct? That is correct, but he also wrote 24 preludes and fugues to explore each key, the sounds for the the piano. No kidding. And it it's amazing. Each prelude, and there's one prelude and one fugue for every major and every minor key in in the whole spectrum for the keyboard. Well, he was quite prolific, wasn't he? Uh, you, it would take a man more than a lifetime to copy his work. Let alone to actually write it, right? That's exactly right. And everything he wrote, he put on it. Holy Day, O Gloria, to God alone the glory. And I I know he was an instrument that the voice of God just flowed through. It's, it's just amazing. It is. That's an amazing, amazing man, amazing music, and I'm not surprised to find that he's one of your very favorites, if not your favorite, Doris. Yeah. It, it blesses my spirit, and... Um, Sometimes when I'm practicing Bach, I get so excited, I either scream or cry. I go from one end to the other. The fugues sometimes are so exciting. Huh. And the, um, the sensitive pieces are, as the one on the CD, O Man Be Wail That Grievous Fall, is one of the most beautiful chorale preludes I've ever heard. And it's so sensitive. He so felt the weight of sin upon man as he as he composed this melody line. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful, Doris, and it fits in that uh, particular set of songs and on that CD very nicely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank uh, you. <laughs> so, you talk about classical music a lot. You definitely is that your favorite kind of music, or do you have any other styles that you like as much, or almost as much? Classical music, yes, is probably um, what I would say would be my favorite, along with the great hymns of the church. They're so, yeah. I grew up with them, and they're so ingrained in my heart and life that um, that's a very deep love as well. Yeah. Do you think... Uh, Do you think classical music is underappreciated today? I do. And maybe that's one of the reasons I wanted to put these on the CD, because there's so much that's written that we don't really hear that is taken from Scripture text. And I think it helps us understand Mm -hmm. in greater measure the words that are being written. I feel like it's underappreciated, and I really am passionate about yeah. <laughs> being appreciated more. Yeah, and probably being like a music teacher helps. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's my other first love is I really love my students, and all the time that I've had to work with any age is wonderful. Are you carrying on any private lessons currently, Doris? No, because we're planning to be moving between our children in these retired years. So I'm not teaching now, but I just finished last May. It's not even been a year at Westland. So um, the teaching is fresh in my mind. If we were to settle in one place, I probably would do it again. And, but right uh, now, it doesn't look like that's going to be you know, on the horizon. Okay. So do you have any other musical projects in plan for the future? 
Sounds like you're kind of got a full plate, maybe. <laughs> well, several people have asked me to do another one on him. If I were to do another one, that would be probably what it would be. More like the first one, which is Untitled Home. Um, him Improvisation is um, another great love of mine, so that might be... That might be a possibility. We'll see. Hey, Doris, speaking of home, because I love that album, uh, the, the photo that you used for that, could you tell our audience uh, where was that taken and is it on there because it is a fond memory? Or It is. It's, it's of our, farm, our family farm where we had It's a very fitting photo, then. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and Jenny, our daughter, took the picture, so I wanted to use it. Doris, a lot of people that are going to end up hearing this back in Bloomington know Jenny. Uh, some of them may or may not have heard that she was involved in an accident a while back. Is she doing okay? She's doing very well, thank you, yes. She was very blessed to be protected, she and her husband, um, a lady swerved in front of them and crashed into them and was, the lady was killed and they were hurt and ended up in the hospital but are both doing well. Thank you. That's good. Doris, I guess this is where Matthew would ask you where people can buy your music. Um, I think we've agreed that we'll go ahead uh, and have the audience uh, contact Olympic Peninsula Spotlight or Circle of Sound uh, for that, and that information will be available to view on screen, uh, and we'll include that information verbally later. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say um, in parting? No, I, I appreciate the time and the opportunity. Uh, I just pray that whatever or whoever listens will be blessed. It's been a blessing to work with you and to also do the project. I'm just very grateful. Thank you so much. We're very appreciative of you being on our program, Doris. Uh, I know the uh, people that haven't heard the CD when they do are going to be amazed. It's an absolutely beautiful CD. Great compilation of work. Um, and we'll have Matthew take us out. Doris, thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you very you much so for being much. here. Oh, thank you very much Bye for being now. here. Yeah, you have a thank good night. you, Matthew and Richard. <laughs> thank you. And Goodbye, gonna... Doris. Goodbye. Bye.
And that music means it's time for Calendar of Events. Thursday, we have the League of Women Voters of Thurston County. General meeting at 6 p.m. at Traditions Cafe, 300 Fifth Avenue, Olympia. The topic is Port of Olympia and legislative updates. Saturday, we have Mother, Son, Palapalooza. Capital High School Foundations and present organizations will host an evening of activities, games, ice cream, and more. From 6 to 9 p.m. at Capital High School Gym, 2707 Conger Avenue, Southwest, Olympia. Tickets are 35 for mothers and sons and 10 for each additional boy and are available at the door or at seatyourself.biz slash capital OSD. And that's it for the calendar of events. This is Rick Nichols and Matthew Warnick with OPS wishing all of you a great week. We look forward to you joining us next week when our guest will be Next week, we'll be turning the spotlight on Siri Smack and highlighting his new CD, the CIEP. So until then, goodbye for now. We'd love to hear from you, so contact us at Olympic Peninsula Spotlight at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.